Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is an online course called Introduction to Microprocessors. Uh, we're, going, we're working on Chapter 5, which is Building Assembler Programs. In this uh, chapter, our aim is to uh, go through, we have several sections here we're going to go through. I'm going to try to do one video per section just to kind of make the video smaller so that they're not so long. Uh, the first section, 5.1, we're going to talk about flow diagrams um, and state diagrams. Section 5.2 through 5.3 we're going to talk about a program branching and subroutines. 5.4 we're going to talk about how to implement delays. 5.5 we're going to talk about simulators. A little bit more about simulators. We, we did a simulator or tutorial but um, we're going to go a little bit more in depth, talk about breakpoints, the stopwatch feature, and the trace feature. 5.6, we'll talk about logical instructions. 5.7, lookup tables. 5.8, more similar directives, include statement, equate macros. 5.9, the ping pong program. 5.10, how to simulate the ping pong program. And then 5.12, indirect addressing. So this lesson is going to be over flow diagrams. <coughs> So a flow diagram is shown on the right side of the screen. Um, it's really easy to get code with no structure to kind of get confused, to make your code is kind of really hard to understand. So sometimes it's better to plan the structure of the program. Um, and so the way, one of the ways we can plan the program pictorially is to, is to draw a diagram like this. Um, and in the diagram, you can see here that this example is for a refrigerator. So in a refrigerator, the way it works is um, there's a set point temperature. You can assume it's maybe with a potentiometer you're setting a temperature uh, or a digital keypad you're setting a temperature. And when the, and then you measure a te the temperature with a temperature monitor, with a temperature sensor. And you compare the, the setting temperature to the desired temperature. If the setting is too high, or if the setting, if the actual temperature is, is too low, I'm sorry, too high, <laughs> if the actual setting, if the actual temperature is too high, then you want to turn on the compressor. So the compressor will make the temperature in the, in the refrigerator go down. And then once the temperature reaches the set point, then it's going to just turn off. So <clears throat> that's the way a refrigerator basic uh, diagram, uh, base, that's a basic description of how a refrigerator works. So how do we show that in a, in a flow diagram? Well, we basically do it with two different types of blocks. Uh, we have a rectangular block and a diamond shaped block. Now, uh, anything we want to do, uh, most everything is going to be done uh, in just a rectangular type box. The only box that's going to be different is a decision box. When we have a decision of a uh, comparison, a yes or no uh, type of a uh, uh, decision, then we use the, tr the, the diamond shaped uh, box, the diamond shaped diagram. Okay? So, any other thing, we're just going to use a, a rectangular shape. So, let's just do an example. Okay? So, the first thing we need to do is we need to have a temperature sensor inside the refrigerator to read the actual temperature. So we'll just put that in a block. You don't have to go through too many details here. Now there's a, there's a trade-off between putting lots of detail where you go through every single instruction and put on here and then just kind of making it uh, get a basic idea of what you're trying to do. So at this level we don't want to really put every single instruction or every little nitpicky thing that we're going to do like setting up registers, initializing things. We don't want to do all that stuff. We just want to get a basic, the simplest um, way, you know, the simplest diagram that we can use to show the basic idea, not the every single detail of the design. Okay, so that's the purpose of the flow diagram. You want the main features of the, of the design. Uh, think of it as a bird's eye view. You're looking at your design from just a, the big picture. We don't really care about the details at this point. Um, it's just enough to, to kind of get a basic idea of, of what you're trying to do. So you may have, so you read the actual temperature. That would be the first thing. We call it TA. 
T uh, actual, and then read uh, and temperature. Read the uh, the set point. This is supposed to be the set point. I don't know what's called DEM, but um, and so then we're going to read the actual set point temperature. Now, if if the set point temperature, which we're calling TD, is uh, if the actual temperature is greater than the set point, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to act if if that's true, yes, we're going to activate the compressor because if the actual temperature is too high, that means we need to cool it down. Okay. Now, if no, we're going to switch off the compressor. So that's a pretty easy decision there. That's a pretty pretty simple thing. And then the next thing is we're going to do. Um, what if the actual temperature is much greater than the desired temperature? Okay, so the D is actually desired, I think. So I don't know why I put DEM. I think that's a typo. So it's probably desired temperature. So if the actual temperature is much, much greater than desired temperature, then uh, we probably want to activate an alarm. If not, then we're just going to go back and loop and do the program over again. Now, most embedded systems have this loop where you loop back to the beginning of the program and you continuously do this. If you just stopped here, then, then it would just take the temperature one time and then we would be done and then your refrigerator would, wouldn't work. You know, you have, to, you have to have this feedback loop that goes all the way back to the beginning again. So that's uh, a good example of, uh, of a, a flow down. And notice that after you activate the alarm, you also want to go to the beginning. So you want to always stay in your loop. So that's an example of a flow diagram. <clears throat> now there's another type of diagram called a state diagram. And some embedded systems, they go through a number of distinct states. And they may stay in each state for a considerable amount of time. And then they'll transition from one state to, an to another after certain conditions have been satisfied. So in certain systems, uh, a state diagram may be more appropriate and um, sometimes when we have a state diagram, we may want to do a combined, maybe a flow diagram to describe each state um, and then have the state diagram as well. So the example we're going to use here is going to be a washing, washing machine. Because in a washing machine, you go through these different distinct states. Um, you know, for example, let's say a user initiates it, they close the door, uh, you know, they put in all the liquid and all the uh, chemicals in the clothes, and then you close the door, uh, you push the button to start it, and then it starts filling up with water. Um, let's say that uh, then they have this fault condition in the middle. Let's say that the water doesn't fill up. You know, maybe you've got to turn on the, fauc on the faucet. Well, there has to be a state where the, the washing machine eventually is going to give up if, if there's no water connected to the washing machine that needs to go to the fault condition and just give up. But this is the normal operation that's on the outside. This is the normal operation. Now the fault condition is when is you go to the middle. And then you clear the fault with a reset type condition and go back to ready. So um, yeah so actually this is the start so we actually started here ready user initiative close the door. Okay so we started at this point. So let's. I'm gonna. So we're gonna start here. Now we go. <clears throat> we go around to this position, and notice that we're going to. It's gonna fill with the water, and it has a timeout if it doesn't fill with water time. Then once the full level gets detected, then it's gonna move from fill water state to heat water state. Um, it's going to heat the water. I don't know. My, my washing machine actually just uses hot water out of the faucet, so I don't know if a lot of these actually use heat water, but maybe some of them have a heat water cycle. If the water doesn't get heated properly, then it may time out. Required temperature reach. Okay, once it gets to the right temperature, then it's going to go to the wash cycle. Okay, wash cycle. Now, the only two other options are, okay, it's out of balance. Like there's probably something wrong with the wash cycle or the function is complete. So if, if it's out of balance, it's going to go back to this fault condition. The only way you can get out of the fault condition is, is to uh, clear the fault with a, a button. Okay? You can see here that the fault condition, 
There's lots of things coming into the fault condition, but there's only one way to get out. That's to push the reset button. Okay. Now you got to, well, after you get the wash cycle, then uh, the function is complete. You've done with the wash cycle. Now you're going to rinse. Um, if you have a motor failure or something, you may want to exit here. All of these are motor failures, so this, oh, motor failure. Now once this, the rinse cycle is done, done, after that function is complete, then you may have the spin cycle. Uh, the spin cycle uh, is either going to have a motor failure or maybe out of balance would probably be a better one. Out of balance, then it goes to the fault condition and stops. Then you have a, a once you get done with spin, then you're done. You're, and then you go, probably you have a, a buzzer right here to say buzzer, and then it goes beep, and then and then you're uh, back into your reset condition, ready condition. <clears throat> okay, so uh, <clears throat> that's about it. So that we just talked about uh, uh, function flow diagrams, and we talked about state diagrams. And the next slides we're going to talk about how we can uh, use the bit test features to implement these diamond shaped boxes. Thank you very much. See you in the next lesson.